where is this Loki at in his head? Like, the guy is heartbroken and probably in turmoil. And also, in the back of his head, knows that maybe a war is coming. And so, like, putting him in high stakes uh, situations and seeing how he reacts. Will he backslide? Is he going to lean into mischief? Because that's an easier bag of tricks for him to pull from. Or is he truly changed? Hey, Kevin, thank you so much for uh, sharing your time with us in the movie podcast. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. We're so happy to be talking with you. We absolutely adored the first four episodes of this uh, of season two. And I'll be honest, we're we're planning on, you know, doing a little She-Hulk and breaking into Marvel so we can <laughs> watch the final two episodes because you're going to make us wait for them now. They're they're in a safe. You'll never find it. <laughs> we're also going to come and take those uh, chair backings that you have over there. Those look really cool. They're pretty great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the TBA one, season two. It's really, oh, that's so cool. We love that. You know, and you know, we have to ask. You know, the first season of Loki felt like we could go anywhere. Where did you want to take season two of Loki that you couldn't last time? We wanted to go to Oklahoma again. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, to us, it was like okay, so multiverse is unleashed. Uh, I think it can become really overwhelming to just go. We're gonna hop to all these different things. Like they can kind of they won't be anchored in any reality. So really, and this is not to be a cop-out answer, it was about deepening the TVA and the drama there of like living in the moment of what they ha are now dealing with and and diving deeper into the character drama. So I, I think that was number one. And then from there you start to go, okay, what are the fun things? Obviously, like once we started talking about Zaniac and doing a movie premiere and these kind of things, setting it, we're shooting in London, turning back the clock and going into the past of London is really just fun. Um, and the World's Fair kind of just came about came about because of wanting to tell this Victor Timely story. Um, and it just felt like, where could a guy like this be? He doesn't have to be in Timely, Wisconsin. Like, we, where would he be trying to get these inventions off the ground? If you just go back a little bit further, you can, you can go to the Chicago World's Fair in the 1800s. So it's like a lot of it was just driven by character and, and, and trying to ground it somehow so that we could just have great kind of story drama. Absolutely. And you talk about, you know, deepening the TVA and, and deepening almost the whole story as a whole. Now, Loki has evolved so much in this series. How did you and Marvel as a creative team kind of balance telling that larger story, introducing threats like King, but also, like you mentioned, deepening Loki as a character? I mean, I think amongst the, uh, on the Marvel side, we're kind of, we were kind of free to do what we want. Like there was no, no, nobody was coming down from above saying we have to tee him up for anything or move him anywhere. Awesome. It was, it was purely, um, I think amongst myself and the writers and Justin and Aaron and, and Castro and all of our, our, our creative team about, um, trying to be true to the character, not like moving him just to move him for plot, but like what, where is this Loki at in his head? And the thing that we really talked about as a starting point was at the end of season one, he really gave himself over selflessly to somebody else's mission, which was huge character growth. And then instantly has his heart broken and the rug pulled out from under him. And like the guy is heartbroken and probably in turmoil. And also in the back of his head knows that maybe a war is coming. And so like putting him in high stakes uh, situations and seeing how he reacts. Will he backslide? Is he going to lean into mischief? Because that's an easier bag of tricks that for him to pull from. Or is he truly changed? And like I think everything in Loki is about playing in the gray area. No one, no one ever good is ever truly good. No one ever bad is ever truly bad, which was from season one. And yeah. I think that's something that like for all of our characters, we that was the mantra we would always go back to uh, in building this. And you and, and things really start off right away this uh, in episode one. And I'm curious, is there an episode this season that you're looking most forward to audiences watching. I would put that back on you of what what did you like? <laughs> because I, I, I guarantee you, once you can talk to everybody else, there will be a lot of different answers. I I I think uh all I think episode one opens with a bang and is so exciting. Uh 
two does it, I'm going to cop out and just start going through all these. But I <laughs> well, actually, I'll say this. I love our episode four, but only also in what it allows us to do in the back half of the series. I, I think episodes five and six may be some of the finest stuff that we've ever made at the studio. They're really great, but they only work because of the road that the character and the story has gone on for, at that point, two seasons of a show. So it just allows us to really do some exciting stuff. I, I love all of them. That's like asking me to choose a child. Yeah, no, for sure. We, we totally get it. And I mean, in, in a show that has so many different timelines and so many different things happening in it, the focus of the show is that we're loving the most so far. So we're so grateful to you and taking your time with us today on the show. And we can't wait for more people to watch it because I'm sure uh, it's going to be a huge hit. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Evan, thank you so much again for your time. We eagerly await the final episode <laughs> now, and uh, we really hope we get to talk to you again. Awesome. Yes, same. Thank you.